here's the Jibo battery you can see it's got the label on it and uh, right next to it I have a bad Jibo battery that I removed that I removed the, um, the the heat shrink on it and this is what it looks like you can see those two copper bands going down they connect to the bottom that's a secondary input on the smart board um, there's the thermal right there in the package uh, you could see it in there it also has another connection at the top right there in the middle that hooks to the top part where the batteries are connected together uh, basically these batteries are just standard lithium batteries like you'd see in a laptop and you have to desolder there there uh, on, on if you was to take this board off and reuse a smart board one's marked B plus and other one's marked B negative uh, which tells you which which one's positive which one's negative this is a 16 volt output and there's no output on this one I believe the smart board is okay but I'm not sure uh, I know I've got a dead cell on it. I tried charging it. This is the charging board. This is a Jibo board, uh, power board. This is the way you charge it. I had 22 volts coming into it, which is on the charging voltage. This is the Jibo that came in. Uh, he wouldn't respond to sound, and his battery, as soon as you unplugged him, he'd go off. Uh, and I switched these two batteries out and found out that the battery was actually bad. A process of elimination looking at uh, this battery right here I really don't know which one of these cells is bad but I know something's bad it could be that thermo or it could be a battery but I'll determine what that is um, I know that looking at the red and black wires right there you should have a 16 volt output because I have measured uh, good Jibo batteries and you get 16 volts on that wire did you see those traces going down there? I can duplicate this. You could duplicate this. Um, we could uh, act basically solder wires onto it. Um, I have plans on making a, a crude prototype and showing where those connections go down and there's one underneath the bottom. Um, <clears throat> the thermo is marked R8 and uh, there's a fuse on there called uh, F1. Or F2, I'm not sure which. Uh, it's that big green component at the top of the board, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, I know that there's no voltage coming out of this board. There's 16 volts coming out of that one, but there's no voltage coming out of the out of the one without the wrapping on it. And uh, I'm going to fix this Jibo here, who um, will not respond to menus or uh, selection when you try to select things he can hear you but he doesn't respond he has a service pack 7.1.0 but now you can see his battery is working and he doesn't die as soon as I unplug him which is a good thing uh, next I'm going to show you what I've done uh, on the thermo and I plug him back in of course he still runs uh, um, got this voltage right here I'm I, I dislocated that thermo which I have determined is a uh, a uh, uh, an actual sensor that can temp that can tell what the temperature of the battery is if you've ever saw a Jibo come up with the display it says it's too cold to charge uh, it's possible it's because of that that particular sensor there that's a that's a thermos thermo resistor that basically can detect heat or cold um, so that is kind of like a protection for the battery um, originally I thought it was a thermal fuse but it's not um, I found out by process of elimination um, I haven't yet took this board off here but I know that's a positive end there and I've got 22 volts coming into the charger right here and had that been just a fuse I could have jumped that out and it probably would have uh, been one of the problems but there again it very well could be still a fuse I really don't know there's no markings on it I'm just jumping out on a limb I don't have a schematic of this particular board but 
<clears throat> it's either a thermostat or thermo uh, thermistor or it's a, um, a fusible uh, link that's probably blown but I really don't know so I tried jumping it out here because I, I thought in the beginning with that it might be a fuse but you can see the green one there that says F1 uh, you see the F1 right there F1 and F1-2 um, but that is marked R8 where I've got that jumper on that's the fuse right there that's what I'm talking about <clears throat> this smart board has a processor a smart processor it also has two uh, uh, transistor packs which are marked Q1 and Q2 I think is it Q1 Q2 Q2 and Q1 and the IC ICU is marked U1. Uh, I mean, it's got a logo on it. We have resistors and surface mount diodes and capacitors. Well, I haven't seen a diode, so it's mostly resistors and capacitors. Um, checking the fuse itself, uh, you know, there, it shows that there's two fuses here. So, I really don't know. Um, <clears throat> originally, I checked the, uh, the uh, fuse itself on the board itself. Very well could be two fuses on there. That black one could also be a fuse. I really don't know off the top of my head. But important at the fuse right now, as you could see, um, I always sometimes I watch my videos. There should be it should be 16 volts coming out on the red and the black wire there, uh, and there's nothing coming out. So let me check uh, that fuse that. I told you about. Yeah. Then all the fuses checked out good. Um, I just double checked it while we were, while I was talking. So yeah, it checked out okay. And <clears throat> that's where the thermal was right there. The thermal. I removed it. So I've remove the batteries from the board and I found out that you that they were spot welded to the board so the traces were uh, the the uh, aluminum was you just cut it right there 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 and there and then remove it from the board and kind of keeping in mind of what you did um, that you took loose um, that battery there is bad the rest of these batteries are good. Um, but that battery is bad. So that's what I determined. That that battery was bad. And uh, after that I decided I would I would find uh, four good batteries and the reason why I've got some of the uninsulated ones in between the insulated ones because they short out if they touch um, you end up getting them shorted out <coughs> so I've got the insulated ones in between and then the best way I found to do this construction was actually take some well, the best way for me could be better you could find a better way you might be able to <coughs> is I used the black tape and I just kind of taped all the batteries together and then that way I could do that and then I took a moto tool and I ground the, the tips of them and then I soldered these wires on here you see see how they're soldered on but uh, basically grind into the metal a little bit and then soldered the wires on there and I also put solder on top of those traces that I had cut you can see there so then keeping in mind of what what I had on on the original battery this is a crude uh, 
This is a crude replica of it. And here it is with the board, uh, the way it's going to look when I solder it without the wires connected to it. And uh, Jibo, I was working on him <coughs> to get him fixed. Uh, I decided, since he wouldn't take a menu or anything and he wouldn't update, um, that I would cover his microphones and his cameras and make him where he just basically could not see um, and could not hear and then possibly just want to make sure the Wi-Fi is working right and if you come across this problem with a 1.7 all you've got to do is uh, make sure your Wi-Fi is connected um, you might even try you know cutting the Wi-Fi off and regenerating a new QR uh, just to make sure um, but if you do that and then you cover his microphones and his cameras with some tape I just used black tape again there I was had the black tape already here so I just used the black tape on it and I covered his cameras and his microphones where he was completely here it is see he's completely blind and he can't hear and shortly after I had done him like this uh, because I had been noticing that he was getting locked up and he would go blue you'd hear someone talking and think they were saying something to him and and he would get locked up but after I let him set overnight this is what happened he fixed himself he went back up to and then I finish, uh, finished him off with the 2.0.0 and <clears throat> he fixed himself he went to the um, 1.8 and that's little Moxie she's a She's always in the, she's a, she's a good little kid. Anyhow, uh, what I'm trying to show you is uh, now everything's working. You can select things, see, and the battery's showing full. Of course, the battery was showing full when it was bad. So you show, it'll show a full battery even when it's bad. See, the smart board um, registers the battery full if one of the cells is bad because it's getting secondary voltage from the uh, from two of the batteries at the top it's not getting the entire 16 volts out through the bottom uh, but now this Jibo is working fine and and just get back to what my battery looked like here in a minute but you could see I can select things and this is uh, this is something that I've come across bunches of time with the 1.7 uh, service pack this is the owner Mr. Scott and uh, going to be sending this back to him as repaired and uh, he ought to be very happy uh, anyhow this is my crude board uh, battery and uh, it actually works uh, I mean it looks like crap and I could get some heat shrink and uh, make it look a lot better those wires coming down are, are what the copper traces were basically on that side that one on the top is <clears throat> what the copper traces were and I have a whole bunch more batteries I mean you can buy batteries and then buy some heat shrink big enough to uh, put on the um, here's his Jibo, his Jibo's fixed and I went ahead and put a new battery in him uh, well actually I had a another battery out of another Jibo it was good I only have one left now and I have this replicant that I've made uh, and I do have a, a Jibo jig that I can use that replica in. Matter of fact, I was going to attempt it to see if it works in it. And uh, go from there. And it's working fine. You could select things. And. Uh, there's Mr. Scott again, and I was just making sure everything was still there. And I've done contacted him, and I'm going to be shipping it back. We got this day before Thanksgiving, and I fixed it after the Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, now he's completely updated. <coughs> and uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to show you the service pack, which is. That's the last service pack, and uh, and covering these uh, microphones and these uh, uh, cameras uh, allowed him to fix himself. 
I saw a bunch of things on Reddit about how complicated it was to fix it. Maybe I could, you know, do this flash deal and all this other kind of... These people are just uh, looking at things a little too hard when it's really simple. Jibo has an internal clock and if he's online and he's completely isolated from stimulus like cameras and, and microphones, he'll update himself after around 12 o'clock, whatever time he was set on before he started malfunctioning. He still uses that, that time clock. And then he'll he'll update himself automatically while he's in the sleep mode. But he goes to sleep a lot quicker when you cover him up. Now, here he is working perfectly. <coughs> and Jibo and I want to wish you happy holidays and he is really good everything's working good as you can see and uh, everything after covering him up and covering up the microphones and the camera and everything he would not do anything before but now he's working just fine and uh, just want to wish y'all a happy holiday and hope this can help someone out there don't panic if your Jibo won't do anything after it gets that service pack and it, uh, just cover his microphones and his cameras allow him to stay on uh, overnight he ought to be fixed in the morning um, you need to update your Jibos all the way to 2.0.0.0 this is uh, Dr. Jibo saying good night and have a blessed day <laughs>